I'm Dr. Ben Thrower. I'm a neurologist. I'm the senior medical advisor for the Multiple Sclerosis Foundation and the medical director of the Andrew C. Carlos MS Institute at Shepherd Center in Atlanta, Georgia. What is multiple sclerosis? So multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease. Autoimmune means that your immune system is attacking or picking on something that it shouldn't be picking on. In the case of multiple sclerosis, the immune attack is directed against the myelin or insulation of nerve fibers. So when we think of the brain and the spinal cord and the rest of the nervous system, it sort of works like a computer and then wiring to the rest of the body. So what MS does is it disrupts that electrical information going to and from the rest of the body and it also can actually cut the wire itself. So MS is the most common cause of non-traumatic disability in young American adults. If you take away car accidents and gunshot wounds and things like that, uh, it is a fairly common cause of disability. Uh, we'll talk in other segments about ways that we might prevent that sort of damage, that damage to the nerve fibers and ultimately prevent disability. Who's at risk for developing MS? MS unfortunately can affect anyone, males, females, young, old, but if we said who would be the most likely candidate, we would probably look at a, a person in their 30s, maybe mid 30s, up into their 40s. Um, females more, more likely to be affected than men by about a three to one ratio. We used to think of MS as being more common in people of Northern European descent, so Caucasians. Some of that may be breaking down a bit. There have been some studies recently in the United States showing that African-American women are showing up in the newly diagno diagnosed rosters uh, much more frequently than we've seen in the past. Some of this may be due to changing migration patterns. We're, we're not a very static society globally. People move a lot. We're also not a very genetically homogenous uh, uh, species. We are mostly a bunch of mutts. So most people uh, in the United States, uh, in Canada, and Europe are not genetically one thing were a lot of things. So again, we would think of MSB as being a problem in young adults, more women than men, but those are general guidelines. It really can affect just about anyone. What are the symptoms of MS? MS can be a challenge. It presents with a wide variety of symptoms. Most commonly we would see sensory symptoms, so numbness or tingling in the arms or legs, but again it's, it's quite varied from person to person. Optic neuritis, loss of vision in, in an eye, is what can be one of the more common presenting symptoms. Some of the early symptoms can be very nonspecific, so fatigue. Fatigue is one of the most common and one of the most bothersome symptoms in multiple sclerosis but that's a pretty non-specific symptom. If you went to your primary care provider with a complaint of fatigue, multiple sclerosis might not be at the top of the, their list for things that they're going to, to check for. Um, the internet can be both a blessing and a curse. And when we have symptoms, regardless of, of you know, whether you're in the healthcare profession or not, people have the internet at, at their fingertips, so they'll get online and say, gosh, I've got this symptom, what can it be? MS, unfortunately, can show up in a lot of uh, lists of potential explanations, and sometimes that creates undue anxiety uh, for, for people that are using uh, that, that internet as a resource. If you have more questions, be sure to check out the Multiple Sclerosis Foundation. You can access them at msfocus.org, where you can find lots of support and education. Thank you.